Hi, it's Devin here, and today I'm going to try something new. I'm going to do a little bit of a tutorial on painting or how I paint the British paratroopers. So, I'm not going to cover painting faces um, and skin because I'm still getting there with that. Um, I started this guy here just before. I decided I was actually going to do it, but I've got two two guys here who are identical, so I'll work on both of them during the tutorial. So I, as I go through at each stage, I'll um, list the paints I'm using, and at the end I'll put a, or well, when I'm finished, I'll know all the paints I've used, and I'll list them down in the description. Uh, so we'll see how it goes. So to start with, we've got the three. Um, four, I should say, base colors here. This is to get the base coat. So, khaki gray that's for the jacket, um, khaki is for the webbing and the backpack, uh, English uniform is for the legs, uh, Caliban green is for the scrim netting around their necks. Yep, there it is. These guys have got a tiny little bit. Um, if you have one of the ones with a helmet, um, I do the helmet as well in in that. Um, also, I just forgot there is one other color and Russian green on the base coat. So that's just for one of the bags so I've got my palette just off to the side here um, basically I'll see if I can do this I don't know if I can paint on camera or not um, but you just start working your way I start with the jacket and I try to be neat um, but not too neat uh, first coat is quite um, thin, I generally takes two coats for me, how I thin my um, paints down to get a solid base coat. So what I'll do, since I'm not very good at this, um, is I'll finish the jacket off on this guy and I'll come back. Okay, so now that's the base coat of the khaki grey done. Um, so nice solid coat, if you've got to let it dry and do two coats, that's what it takes. Um, up next is the English uniform. Okay, so I'm going to do the basically the trousers. Um, and again, just same thing, just go in there. So now you've got to start being a little neater because we you come up against the, the khaki grey that you've already done. Um, yep. And again, I think I will come back. I'm still not very not used to having the camera in front of me and the mini. Um, does make it a little difficult. It's interesting though, um, and I don't know whether to. And I have the light a bit too close as well. Um, I keep looking up at the screen. Um, yeah. Oh, so I'll I'll carry on. I don't think you really need to hear me waffle in between. Uh, and I'll come back once the English uniform is so done. So that's the English uniform done. Um, up next is the car key. So this is for doing the webbing. Oh, let's. So, the webbing, which is the little ammo pouches under here. I don't know if I can. Is it going to focus for you? There we go. Pouches here. The straps going up. The backpack here. But not this bag here. This bag here is what I will do with the Russian green. Um, oh! And I always do this, I forget. 
the water bottle here um, I will also come back and do that in English uniform and then the little straps across you do in khaki um, and here so now you're starting to have to be a, a, a lot neater um, it's really good to set yourself um, so you hold the mini and you either I generally try to rest my left hand and I'm left handed on my other hand and, and try to have my pinky sort of touching the base as well um, and you just start picking out the um, the webbing I think this little bit here is his entrenching tool I'm actually not sure what this piece is alright since this bit is these are quite um, fine I will definitely switch off the camera and I'll come back once I finish car key oh, oh hang on while I remember also let's see just down here at the bottom before the boots there are um, the gaiters these are like a strip sort of, of leather um, that they wrapped around the top of their legs or top of the boots, bottom of the legs um, and the trousers sort of tuck into them so it's just this little section here, I'll point that out once I've um, painted it so it's not the boot itself you'll um, see the detail on the mini so um, I'll finish this off I'll finish the car key off and I'll so come that's back. the car key done um, on all the webbing and you can see down there on just down here on the gaiters around there just above the boots so up next is we'll do two colors next uh, one is the the Russian green and then the Caliban green. So the Caliban green is up on this scrim netting that's around the neck and then also on the can we focus just on the on the cuffs okay on these guys you can see just there on the cuffs of their jacket there's a little section there so we'll do that in the Caliban green as well the Russian green is this bag on the back here and the strap and the strap is actually also visible on the front it goes across the chest where the, the webbing goes down the chest this is like another bag strap that's going across so I'll pick them up too much paint on the brush there again starting to get into the fine detail so set yourself and just take your time you can see I I don't know I'm pretty terrible at this I move the mini around all the time just to get the right angles uh, whatever kind of works for me don't be too concerned if you make a mistake at this stage because you can just go back and hit it with um, the base color for that area if you go over the edge um, yeah so it's not it's not too bad though actually I need to dilute my paint a little bit more it's just a bit too thick on the brush there we go that's much better don't want to dilute it, dilute it too much otherwise um, it gets very liquidy and it'll run everywhere um, and this really depends what you can do at the moment I'm just using water um, but uh, it depends on the paint and and your water in your area so 
Um, I have tried using distilled water to get more consistent results and that's not too bad. Um, but I also have, I'll have to find it somewhere. Um, just a second, I also have, what is it called? Uh, thinner medium from Vallejo, uh, which is really good. It still still gives a bit of viscosity to the paint, even though that you've you've thinned it down. Um, yeah. Oh, so I'll finish this off and do it on the other guy. Uh, I'll do the Caliban green as well, and we'll come back for the next. So step. That's the greens done. Um, you can see them all finished now. Quickly. I'm just going to do the hair. I'm going to do one uh, a ginger using light rust, and the other guy's going to have brown hair, and I'm going to use uh, Mournfang brown. So just quickly while I remember, because the next step after this is the washes. So um, just quickly pick up the hair. I mean, I could have probably just said both of them have black hair, but, you know, let's just mix them up, add a bit of variety into the team. That's that one. Oop. And now I just might get that little bit behind his ear. Okay, and now I'll get the second guy done with the Mournfang brown. So up next are the washes. So we've got Agrax Earthshade. Uh, Dark tone, army painter, dark tone, and army painter, soft tone. So, Agrax Earthshade is the one you're going to use the most. It's going to go over all the colors basically of the, the jacket, the webbing, uh, the bag. It won't go over anywhere where we've got the Caliban green, so on the cuffs and on the, on the scrim around the neck. That's where we'll use the the dark tone. So if you've got null oil, you know, just any any black wash or ink will do for for the the Caliban green. Uh, other than that, the whole thing, not the boots though. Um, Agrax Earthshade, and I will use the the soft tone here, um, just on the guy with the the ginger hair where I use the the light rust. Um, so, well, I just start with the Earth, Agrax Earthshade, give it a good shake, um, and I generally like to put a little bit down on a bit of palette paper because everything here seems to dry out. So, <laughs> yeah, and just you know, liberally apply it, and work it around, work it into into the recesses. No need to be too delicate here. <laughs> Am I painting off camera? Um, yep, just work it around. Make sure you push it right in to the to the gaps there at the back. Just take your time around on the collar up near the face. Yep, just work it around. Okay, so I'm going to finish these off and I'll come back once the washes are done. Uh, you'll need to leave them obviously for a little while after you do the washes because you, you, you need 
you need them to be completely dry for the next stage. Now we're on to the fun part really, the, the details. So the first step is highlighting. So you're going to go uh, highlighting with the base colors. So you're going to go over each of the base colors that you've put down, uh, that you've washed with the base color. So with the jacket, again, that's the khaki gray. Um, make sure your paints are quite thin with this. Um, because really you're just sort of working your way along and picking up the top parts. You want to sort of stay out of the creases and just pick up all the high parts. Well, I've said that several times now. Um, I enjoy these steps because it's really when you start seeing you know, all the details stand out. Um, and I like it. It doesn't feel as tedious. You know, base coats to me is where it gets a bit tedious, but I don't know. I'm getting better at base coating, so... So yeah, you just work your way all the way around. Um, so you do the the jacket with the khaki grey, uh, all the webbing with khaki, um, and the uh, the pants, trousers with the English uniform. So I'm going to do that. Then I'll come back and we'll do the next level of highlighting after that. So that's the first level of highlighting done. Um, as you can see, the one on the right, he's the one I've done the highlighting on. I left the guy on the left out the highlights. Um, so you can see the difference. Also forgot to mention that you should do the little green backpack there. You should just highlight it with Russian green. Um, just you know, just the same base color. So the next level of highlights, what we use is here it is, Iraqi sand. Okay, and now we use this basically to lighten the colors that we have. So on my palette here, if I make some room, you can see across the top this is the uh, khaki gray. That's the khaki, and that's the English uniform. Over here is the um, Iraqi sand. And this little splotch here is where I've mixed some um, up before. Mm, need to get a little bit more water on there. Uh, so get a bit of khaki gray there. And it's really, it's not 50-50, this first or the second highlight here. It's really probably 75 um, 25 so like only about 25 percent Iraqi sand you can see how quickly it lightens it up so we really want to I don't want a huge transition there we go that's a much closer match maybe just a little bit more khaki gray yeah so you do that with all three of your colors and again just wipe off a bit off the brush again and you just go around again you're being um, quite subtle you're just picking up the really highest of highlights and you're paying I suppose more attention to lighting now the first one was really just to give a bit of a bit more definition I'm not even painting on camera um, to the uniform this one is really about no I'm not very good at this am I painting on camera it's a it's a talent and I've made a mess of that but that's okay I can come back and fix that up so you just work your way around just picking up the highest of highlights um, and you do that with all of your colors. And 
Okay, so I'll carry on, I'll do that, and then I'll, I'll show you the comparison again between the two guys. So it's the second level of the highlighting complete. You can see there the difference between the two. The webbing really starts to stand out. The high points are much brighter. You can take it another step further if you want, just mixing in more Iraqi sand. Um, but looking at this, I'm happy with that. So the next part is doing basically the Denizen smock uh, camo pattern on these guys. So start with um, dried bark and woof laffa camo green and I'll just get a little and I'll start with the green. It doesn't really matter which one you start with and you just pick some points if we'll get some focus on this and you just start doing sort of these broad strokes around um, you just work your way around, just doing them here and there. Don't be afraid to put them, you know, all over the place. But you don't want too much. You're not painting, you're not painting it green. You're just putting these sort of brush strokes across. Try and change up the angle too. That's one of the things I don't do very well. It's changing up the angle. So I put a few on like that to start with. Then I change colors over to the dried bark. And start putting them on. I'm sort of holding that out of the way of the camera uh, again, but I'm just trying to see what's going on and where I should be putting these. So I, I don't, don't really know what else to say about this, but you just sort of play around with the pattern um, and switch back and forth. Um, I can see here I need to do a bit more at the front, just down the bottom here of the green. So we'll almost try and change the angle of that one a little. Put a little bit of a green just in there. Your focus for us. So you can see you've got little smatterings all the way around. Um, and then the next step is you grab your um, Agrax Earthshade again and you you run it over the top of each each one just to create a little um, definition a bit more depth in that so I'm going to do that and I'm also going to go off and highlight the other guy and get him up to the same level and I'll come back after that the next step is to highlight the camo markings so the greens are just highlighting with the Luftwaffe Camo green again, but there's a new brown here for the brown, which is German camo medium brown. Uh, really simple, you know, you're really just aiming for the middle of the patches and just highlighting them up. Sort of go for the high points and then to, and towards the middle. This 
this just helps make the color a little bit more solid um, and just give it a little bit more depth so it's pretty simple I mean that's the green done uh, do the brown now it's the same process just where it's running through the creases here just got to be a little bit more careful probably a touch watery that paint but should get the job done So the next step is to just touch up all the parts that are going to stay black so that's really just the boots and the metals so with the metal I use um, bolt gun metal but I sort of mix it with uh, you know just black and I use Vallejo surface primer black to really get a much darker metal color um, I find this is much more sort of realistic uh, for you know basically gun metal um, and then you just work your way along the top of the rifle mainly barrel done now this is really a dark quite a dark mix to start with um, and you just sort of mix in a little bit more uh, bulk gun metal after you get this sort of first coat on just to bring it up another level next up is the wood of the rifle uh, start with a base coat of dried bark which I've already done um, and then you come up and highlight with uh, Mornfang Brown um, these are I don't know the best colors I've got there's probably better colors out there um, but these are the ones that I've got so yeah, you just sort of picking up the edges and sort of dragging it down Nothing too exciting on this. It's yeah, you know, the rifle's pretty small. Um, yeah, a little bit of the timber that you're dealing with is um, they're quite small and broken up as well. So That's pretty much it for the rifles. Um, I'll probably just work the color a little bit on the top edge here. that's it righty on to the last part the beret so I base it with the uh, whole red and then sort of do a blend between the whole red and Mephiston red and sort of go all the way up to Mephiston red on top so gotta really take care on this um, you know, you're really starting to come down to where you've painted other areas already so not a lot of room for mistakes so what I will do if we'll get some focus there is I'll carry on and I'll come back when I'm finished 
and here they are finished. So I am hope hopefully that was useful for uh, someone out there. Um, I had fun doing it. It was something a bit different from what I normally do. Uh, painting in front of the camera is an interesting challenge. Um, from here I'll paint the bases brown. I've got a cheap brown paint somewhere. Um, I will paint them brown then I've got my little mix of uh, flock and coffee grounds and random stuff that I'll glue on. I'll give them a matte varnish and I'll probably add some decals to them. These guys will probably both be private so they'll just get the uh, paratrooper symbol up on their sleeve. Um, and I've nearly finished painting the section that they're part of so in the next few days uh, there will be like a showcase video of that section up which will include these two guys so thank you for whoever's stuck around this long um, and keep hobbying and I'll see you next time